some fascinating things. I'm looking at a CD we'll tell you about later that's uh, the Johnny Crawford Dance Orchestra. I'm looking at this comic book that he was kind enough to sign from the Rifleman, and, and I can't really show you inside of this, but this is a Playboy from 1970, I think, 73. He goes from being the all-American clean-cut cowboy, and he shows up as the first full frontal nudity male in Playboy magazine. We'll try to figure all this out as we go on, but this guy is my hero. I grew up... For which... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're my hero for both uh, magazines, and the Johnny oh. Crawford, welcome. Good to Thank see you. you. Welcome Thank to the Western you. Film Fair. Um, you know, you're like, go ahead, we'll bring the water in while we're, uh, we'll just keep rolling. Thanks. Because it's, it's a hot day in, in here. Yeah. Especially when we were looking at the Playboy picture and it got hotter in here. Look, you, as a kid, and people may not realize this, but you grew up in L.A. and sort of like a lot of kids our age, and liked westerns and like you told me you went to the, what was it, the little carnival and rode the pony or whatever. I mean, you were into all that stuff, right? Uh, I loved westerns, and uh, we didn't have uh, our TV until 1953, and prior to that, um, we'd go up the street, and there were maybe one or two houses uh, with, with children right. our age, and we would, uh, Saturday mornings, it was all about westerns, you know. Um, uh, we watched so many uh, B westerns. Hoplon Cassidy was on, and yeah. all those guys. Oh, you know, and 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 uh, you know, if we were changing channels, and we saw bat wings, you know, um, uh, or horses, uh, right? We would stop right there, and, and we probably watched a lot of films that are now uh, have been lost. Oh know? yeah. Now your uh, parents would take you to ride the pony at the little. What was it? Right off of uh, Beverly or? Yeah, I, I don't know what it was called, but it was um, um, a little um, amusement park right. for kids, right. and right at La Cienega and and Beverly, and there was a uh, an oil thing there. What yeah, do you call it? Very oil, western, there, yeah, like there. a drill rig. Yeah, rig. I, I thought it was one of the rides. <laughs> uh, no, you can't get on an oil rig and ride it. It but took you, them to two hours to get me off of that thing. Oh, on the on the pony, yeah. off the pony. You love the pony. No, the the, the oil. You thing. got on the oil rig. Well, I thought it was a ride. Your br your it was going up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Look, a lot of people uh, who, who remember you from The Rivalman and your other career realize that uh, even before that, you were singing. You loved to sing as a kid, and you did imitations of Johnny Ray. And, <laughs> and people may realize this, but you, you used that talent of singing to get into the Mickey Mouse Club, and you were in the first group of Mouseketeers. I was, yeah. I, I auditioned. Um, Along with these other kids, but before, I was very nervous um, because they were all so talented, and I could uh, dance a little. I was taking tap lessons. Um, I was a big fan of Donald O'Connor, and um, but I messed up in, in my dancing. I forgot my dance steps because I was so nervous, and and it was almost over. And Jimmy Dodd was the leader, right? And he asked. Um, he asked us if anybody wanted to do anything more, and uh, my grandmother said, "Johnny does uh, imitates Johnny Ray." You know? <laughs> and so I uh, I sang uh, "Cry," yeah. and uh, and that did uh, the trick. That did the trick. But you only lasted about a year because half of the group got cut. They wanted to, to make the group smaller, yeah. but that that was fortuitous because you ended up getting the job on The Rifleman, and as the story goes... Not right away. Well, not right away, but you did some acting. But when you walked in for the audition for The Rifleman, as I understand it, uh, uh, Chuck Connors, uh, before you even spoke, he said, that's Mark. I mean, he knew there was chemistry right there, right? I guess so. <laughs> I, I mean, you guys really got along know, well. Yeah, well, by that time, I was more confident. Yeah. And, and I didn't have to tap dance. <laughs> the, uh, you know, there was a lot of today, people talk about violence on TV, and they'll say, oh, you can't shoot people or whatever. Back then, there was a lot of, you know, the rifleman shot a lot of people, but it was, the violence was diffused. Nobody ever complained about it because there was this father-son loving thing going on. You and I talked about this on the phone some weeks ago. Talk about how unique that relationship was for a television western. Well, at that time, there were, I, I don't think there had been a show about a widower raising his son uh, in any um, time period. 
Um, and so it was very unique and it, it inspired the writers. And uh, when we got the first um, seven or eight scripts, um, I was um, on summer vacation with my dad and, and my brother. And uh, we called home and my, my mother uh, was in, in tears because she had read all of the scripts. She, she, she was a voracious reader. Right. And she was so surprised at the quality of those first episodes. Sure. And um, it was groundbreaking. It was, and and it was. I was very excited. You had a. Uh, you continued with your singing, and and this just this part amazes me. I mean, I, your talent amazes me. But the fact that you're doing a hit show, you're having to learn your lines. Now you start recording. You had, as I counted, five or six hit records. Uh, during the, the filming of The Rifleman, and you had to go to school. How did you get all that done? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the uh, lines also, I had to, I felt like it was my job to watch all the other Westerns on television. Yeah. And uh, I was, you know, I was still a Western fan, and there were so many Westerns uh, at that time. Um, I mean, it was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I think they, there was a, they even had a special uh, Emmy uh, category. Yeah, there were 38 Western. or 39, 40 Western, Cheyenne, Maverick, all these things. So you're trying to do your homework, learn lines for yeah. the rifleman, and, and learn lyrics for your hit song recording sessions. Well, yeah, and I had to, I became a quick study. Um, I'm not so quick anymore, but <laughs> um, I, I would lay on the, the on, on my stomach and watch our TV and 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 uh, swear that I was doing my homework. I'd have my homework in front of me. On the, <laughs> and, uh, you cheated, is what I you cheated. said. I cheated, and then I would I would I would have the shooting schedule, so I would take those pages out of the script that I knew I was going to have to shoot that day, that night, that would, right, you know, right. while I was doing the homework. Yeah. And, and and I would fold up my pages, the lines that I had to know the next day, right. and stick them in my pocket. And uh, then I had a welfare worker who was an accredited teacher. She was wonderful and very concerned about my education. But she would, um, and I was the only one that she was tutoring, teaching, teaching. tutoring, unless there was another kid on that particular episode. Right. And um, she would. Um, give me an assignment and then she would uh, be reading something or doing something and I would pull out my my pages that I had to know for the next <laughs> scene and, and I was just a quick study. You're, you're the original multitasker. <laughs> you, uh, after the uh, the Rifleman, and I'm assuming you got a lot of fan mail from your hit records. I mean, young girls loved those uh, records of yours, yeah, didn't they? It's a shame I was so shy. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so you had these hit records and you finish with The Rifleman, you go and you continue your acting. Uh, you did the, the El Dorado with John Wayne, which is one of my favorite movies. Um, I, I talked to Ed Asner about it one time, and he gave me some insight about that. But what was, what was it for you uh, working with John Wayne? Well, uh, I was very excited. Um, I remember the audition with the director, Howard Hawks, who was a legend. And, and he was a really very nice guy. And I, I, my audition, just the two of us talking about things. And I thought, well, this is going to be great. And he said, you know, um, we, we haven't really written your scene yet, but it's going to be a good, it's going to be important. And, right, oh, yeah. And it's only, I only had like two scenes. But it was a pivotal scene. It drove the, the yeah. whole movie, actually, yeah. the action. And, and the other scene I wasn't difficult because I was supposed to be dead. Yeah. Is it easy to play dead? He, well, yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I was over a horse, actually. I know. And I, it was not my uh, best angle. But, yeah. Don't um, shoot anymore, mister. I won't, he said. See, that was, I know the lines from that. I can do the whole thing. You know, the, the, I can do uh, the whole end. The album of the music. I've got that. Uh, yeah, uh, Nelson Riddle. I yeah, think. Nelson Riddle. Um, it's a collectible. It is. And, and one of the uh, reasons it's a collectible is because uh, it's, they chose the, the, the scene where I'm draped over the horse and he's bringing me back to the... And, but 
on the edge of the album, you can see the headlights of a truck <laughs> well, in front of the barn. Well, you know, that... You just, uh, not a... Not a uh, uh, Artistic license. Yeah. All right. Look, I can't. I can't. I would be remiss if I didn't hold. I'm not going to open this, but this is the Playboy magazine I referred to. You did a film called The Naked The Naked Ape with Victoria Principal before she was famous for Dallas. Uh -huh. It was very tastefully done. Everywhere. But Hugh Hefner funded the movie, uh -huh. so Hugh said, "Hey, I'll just take some snippets of photographs and put them in the Playboy magazine. It'll be the full the full frontal nudity, the first male ever to do that." Did you? get a lot of flack from that from your Western fans and well I didn't think it was a big thing <laughs> we don't know what you're referring to but uh, so, it was, so it, was, it was not a big thing or something was not a big thing but I mean you did, you did catch some flack for it didn't you um, no I, I, I was in good health the whole time <laughs> Look, folks, I promise I'm not going to open this. Lori and Pam, my wife's back there, and uh, well, Pam's my wife. I only have one wife. I'm mm -hmm. not Mormon. It's but really very innocent. It is innocent, but yeah, he has nothing to be ashamed of. I'm just going to say that. This, I mean, you were, you were ripped. I mean, that was before people talked about six packs, and you, man, you were really muscular. I don't want to talk about the Playboy magazine. It's making me feel inferior. But before we, <laughs> <laughs> before we go, my last question is, did you have any idea that the rifleman would be so popular, you know, across generations, and here we are, 2014, hmm. people still love it. I, you know, and, and uh, I, I hoped that they, someday they would show these silent episodes. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we went way back. The, yeah, you're not that well, old. You're actually, not that we old. started shooting sound on the third episode. <laughs> but um, I tell you, and all kidding aside, you could look at some of those episodes without sound, and the, the relationships and the chemistry was so great. It's no wonder it's still a hit, but it, does it surprise you that it's still so popular? Well, I don't know that it does. It, it seems like it, it really deserves to have that popularity because it's... it's uh, the, the values and the uh, life lessons that occur during the show are so healthy today. Yeah. Today, and and people need to uh, you know learn these things because a lot of children don't get it at home. I know. I know. I promised I would also hold up the sweeping with the clouds away. The Johnny Crawford Dance Orchestra. This is available for sale. There's places they can go on your website. Uh -huh. and get this, and I hope you will. It's great music, and I wish we had more time to talk about that because it really takes you back. It's fantastic music. You are a great it's, musician. It's the thing I would have been doing as Mark McCain. Yeah, if, if Mark had lived had on. lived on, yeah, he would I, have been my age in the 1930s yeah, and leading a, a dance, dance band. band. So it's in a parallel universe. I'm now talking to a man within a man within a, a man. This is very man. confusing. <laughs> Johnny Crawford, you're my hero. Jim, thanks. thanks.